because they could see what my soul wanted to achieve. They want, and they started to help my soul achieve what me as a human and my logical mind couldn't even understand yet. So they were all, all, almost running ahead of me and setting up circumstances and helping me get there over and over and over and over again. Hello everyone, welcome to our podcast, We're Open. My name's Alicia Power and I'm a long-time spiritual seeker. I've been a spiritual teacher for 40 years and with me is Claudine Silman, my dear long-time friend who is near the beginning of her spiritual development journey and together we hang out and chat and answer your questions about spirituality. So with that, I'm going to bring in Claudine. Hello, Hello Alicia. Claudine. Hello. Lovely to be back chatting with you again. Oh, it is always really, really lovely to see you. I always enjoy our conversations here. I feel like I feel like we we work with a question and then it takes off into these incredible sort of not it tangents does. but but down these roadways of amazing exploration about very deep spirituality. It so. does. It's just um, yeah, so many different pathways and different ways it can go. And um... yes, and especially answering questions that people really want to open up and have someone talk about some of these spiritual dilemmas sometimes, or things Absolutely. that people are, are really wanting somebody to ask. You know answer some of these really really important questions exactly yeah because if you think about it you don't always get a, um, a chance to chat like that in our daily lives in some of our friendship circles we may not know people that want to or have the knowledge on those topics exactly so yeah so it's nice for us to have a chat and i've got a really good question for today as well wow so our question for today how do I know I am just about to awaken? What are the symptoms of being close to awakening? And that one is from Aaron. So thank you, Aaron. Um, I was going to ask you, Alicia, when um, could you describe when you first had your spiritual awakening? You know, it's, it's such a huge question again. Like these questions are so huge, aren't they? And... Um, awakening what are some of the symptoms of awakening you know how do we know if we're awakening and yeah and um i think i remember some very powerful moments in my life and they were when i was very much younger i was having relationships and i was noticing that the relationships some of these relationships were uh, quite intense um i was kind of moving through having to sort of just hold on by the skin of my teeth, you know, to staying yeah. calm and staying happy. And, uh, and do you know, in the middle of some of the, some of that intensity in those relationships, I noticed something like a big part of me at the back of me was noticing a shift and a change. And it really was like something was cracking something open it, and, or you could say it was something was pulling off old crusts off me. Yeah. Through that, through that intensity process, like um, you know, they say gems. You know, where they throw it in the tumbler and it and it chips off the, all the rough bits until it's yeah. all round. So it's a yeah. it's a little bit like that. Where in the middle of a lot of that stress, you could say, or being with someone, and there was misalignment or something was going on, where you, you might love someone, but um, something was clashing and but at the same time there were incredible big aha moments and gems of moments where you realize that you that you didn't know everything and that actually it was time to let go of huge frameworks that that one took for granted that everybody yeah. that previously you knew that you used to hang out with just took for granted that that's how everybody operated and and I remember in, in one or two of these relationships having to make a decision. I remember us sitting on the ground in a corridor somewhere. I actually can't remember what was going on there. But this came to me. It was like a moment where I was, I was just um, 
it was just a moment not doing anything in particular, but just something entered yeah. my brain, which went, you can't cope in the current way that you're operating. <laughs> and the only way forward, it, it's like letting go of have to's, letting go of to do lists, letting go of control, letting go of um, being together, being sort of held and appropriate for everybody and for yourself, you know, according to the box of our yeah. one sees oneself, you know. And yeah. there was this, the, I just remember sitting on the ground and thinking, I can't cope. The only way I can cope is to let go of all my have to's, is to let go of, um, I think I was, I had too much to do perhaps at that time. Yeah, but I was maybe. really good. I was a really good organizer. I was really good at organizing things and keeping things organized and keeping things together. And I think a lot of people listening to this will go, oh, my God, even yeah. especially at this point, you know, on planet Earth where there's that much distraction, there's just so much going on. Our, our tech is so in our face constantly. And anyway, just stress and too much to do. But in this moment, I went, I've, I can't cope. Um, and I remember thinking, I haven't got the energy to send Christmas cards to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Little things like that, yeah. Yeah, and, and in that moment, it's much bigger than just the Christmas cards. It's a stepping away from a box, a framework of, I've got to do what everybody expects of me or even how I expect myself to be according to what I was born into, a framework I was born into and how everybody else um, around me up until that point kind of operated and yeah. so it's the big letting go makes so much sense it's those expectations of others and how you you're in a certain mold how you've been brought up with uh, societal beliefs and beliefs from our family so I guess it's it can be quite painful because you, you're sort of having to step away from that and step into your own Absolutely. Um, I was just going to say that uh, it's it is bigger. It's it's a big moment. It's it can be disguised as something that you think you're logically thinking about, but underneath that, it's a jump off the cliff. Um, and what that really means is that you're letting go of the handrails. You know, you you are letting go of everything you've known how to do, maybe up until that point. And you're also letting go of the way that you think about yourself too. And what happens in a moment like that, and this is my memory of, how, of what happened to me, is that it actually opens up a door um, or a possibility for brand new thoughts and brand new information to start coming in. And it's interesting, yeah. it's almost like universe then starts the process of books falling off bookshelves and yeah. you're talking to someone at a party and they're talking about something that you don't know that much about but you're really curious about it and it leads you down a, down a discovery path. So suddenly um, new information starts becoming available and that opens up and it flowers and that leads you to more inquiry and more curiosity and that starts triggering the longing in you to, or even opens up. We talked about people who get into yoga and um, <clears throat> and start discovering spirituality that way. So that was, yeah, I, th those were key moments. It's interesting, I've never thought of that moment up until now, I haven't remembered it. But that was, I could imagine that would be an awakening moment. And I'm pretty sure that a lot of people watching this have got similar moments. Yeah, yeah, because it can come through um, it doesn't always have to be a trauma or it could sometimes it's a relationship breakdown or um, a job loss. Um, but then other times it's the universe tapping you on the shoulder and just saying it's time, it's time for your soul to awaken. Um, which, yeah, it's um, for me it was wanting growth and adventure. So I, I left my hometown and moved into state. And I, I think looking back, that was that was the beginning of of a whole new path for me. Um, and then once I moved into state, I had a relationship end. So then I was on my own. Um, 
so yeah that again when I look back I was always interested in spirituality um, but more so now um, and as you said self-development books were appearing um, but also I think it, it's it can pause and you can go through the different stages of the awakening and sometimes it can be put on hold if you're not fully aware of what's happening so yeah that, that was really did interesting that, did that happen to you yeah i think um once i was on my own i was getting on with life and not going as deep as and i look back and i think wow why wasn't i going deep back then but obviously i wasn't ready for that so i guess i was just hanging out with friends and living my life as a single person and then years after that I met my now husband and then I had a real sense and a craving for adventure um, I wanted to sort of um, remove debt and focus more on experiences rather than um, possessions so and that just sort of came I just made the decision it just came to me I just thought no this is it um, because I think we can feel we're on the, as they say, on the mouse wheel. <laughs> so just working, eating, sleeping. Um, so, yeah, I've just always felt there's so much more. It's bigger than me. So that's, yeah, I think we um, jumped on a motorcycle, did a huge trip across the USA, and that was my adventure. Um, then we came back and then we house-sitted for 12 months, living all over our state. Um, and connecting back with animals, which was a huge thing too for me. Um, and th now we've moved to an island. So it's ongoing. Um, but now <laughs> I'm wanting to get that real go deeper with the work. Beautiful. What a journey. What an exploration. And I love, I love the yeah. way that you are in touch with your truth and what it's feeling and what it's wanting to do and you're trusting it and you're going with it. I love that. I think that's a real key, by the way, to awakening is it's jumping on a on a bike and just staying balanced, but feeling the balance and feeling where it wants yeah. to go and just letting the flow go, you know, yeah, trusting it's the flow. Yeah, definitely. The bike would definitely um, is awakening. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's Oh, you're talking about a motorbike. I was talking about it. Yeah, yeah. A, a bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> sort of brought it back in. <clears throat> Um, yeah, because you, you're free and you're out there in, in the elements. So that's a, um, a, good, a good way to experience your awakening as well. So, mm. You know, some people do ask about the symptoms of awakening. And there, I, I was actually thinking that um, <clears throat> one interesting symptom is waking up in the middle of the night. It's an interesting, it's an Absolutely. interesting one where we we do want a good night's sleep, and sometimes it can be because we're stressed and we're ruminating and we're thinking we can't stop thinking. But sometimes the worlds of spirit are interacting with us in the middle of the night, and right. we wake up, yeah, and we wake up maybe about three o'clock, four o'clock, yes, uh, and and we can't. <laughs> a lot of people talk about this, and we can't fall back asleep, but something's going on. It's like, like a energy. Is happening, and we just have to relax and allow it. And as an energy healer for 30 years, I know what what's happening in that moment is that there's a cocoon of energy around us. The spirit world can feel our longing to awaken, to peel off the the um, the shutters. You know what I mean? Like the blinds to peel the it layers. off. That's the layers that you know our souls actually hungry for us to remember our power and ourselves as a soul. And so the spirit world comes close sometimes in those times, like three o'clock or four o'clock in the morning, spins a beautiful cocoon of energy around us and starts kind of drilling into the concrete. Um, deep in our Akashic records, our soul history, um, old memory that's sitting there or fear memory that's sitting there or you know the yeah. the box where we're talking about where the expectations where we live according to everybody else's expectations you know and so they start breaking that up in deep subliminal subconscious layers and so you're lying there at three o'clock or four o'clock in the morning not quite knowing what's going on and just feeling this energy and 
it's a great time to talk to your spirit guides, to sort of say, hey guys, I know you're there, thank you so much, and I can't fall asleep, so I'm just going to enjoy it. I know you're helping. I know you're elevating me. I, I know you're trying to help me remember. So that's that that can happen for years. Because right, the, yeah. the, worlds of, the worlds of spirit um, they're actually asking me to say right now, because I'm... I connect with them and chat with them really easily. And they're actually asking me to say right now is that they're very, very dedicated to anybody who's really searching and who's really keen, really, really, really keen. I don't know if you've experienced it, <laughs> Claudia, because I know you're keen. <laughs> but uh, yes. but uh, but they're just saying that they can feel that keenness, that longing, that soul longing. And they start stepping in and helping and trying to um, sort of turn up the volume or turn up the speed with which the remembering can happen. You know, we, we just start understanding life deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and just getting more into our um, sweet spot of power, of empowerment as a soul and as someone who's come here to make a difference um, and we want to get on with that. And, uh, and so, you know, someone like yourself and many, many people want to get on with making a difference. They want to plug into the energy of loving, the energy of contributing, the energy of pouring their soul light, you could say, out into into Mother Earth and into humanity. Mm -hmm. So they want to get on with that, but they don't know how to, they don't sort of can't really see themselves in that role yet and they so there's a bit of a gap and so my spirit guides are actually asking me to say is that they really want to help with bridging that gap as quickly as possible and sometimes it's a, there's a bit of a mess messy wiring <laughs> like many of us have gone through very turbulent childhoods for example like some people have gone through really really tough childhoods and so the wiring's really quite messed up with trust with letting letting their lives flow because they've got a lot of distrust and a lot of uh, self-doubt and you know that their um, self-awareness you know maybe there are an, maybe there are you know an old soul but they've got a lot of crusts and a lot of that concrete from childhood and so yeah so the worlds of spirit come three o'clock four o'clock in the morning there's this really interesting and I'm not sure what the specific thing is but at three o'clock in the morning I think it's like the angle of the sun or the moon or something the way it's hitting planet earth wherever we are you know it's planet earth's rolling at that time <laughs> at, yeah. yes and it creates some kind of a portal some kind of an access point for the worlds of spirit it's a bit easier for them at that time three or four o'clock in the morning right. a lot of a lot in buddhism and a lot of spiritual traditions they get up to meditate at three and four o'clock in the morning because they instinctively know it's a powerful time with spirit so um so just saying anyway yeah. so that's that's a indicator that can be an indicator of awakening right there interesting to know <laughs> it's good to know yeah also um and instead of being restless and being frustrated we can't get back to sleep we can start connecting and speaking to the guides there and mm. um that would i think that will help us get back to sleep eventually so yeah it's good to know yep exactly and, and another for, for everybody watching this um if you are in a turbulent time, remember that story I told right at the beginning, you know, where you, where you really think that the world's crashing in on you and you can't stand it any longer. Like, I just want to say that sometimes that is a cracking open of, uh, you know, to find deeper strength inside of us, but also maybe to surrender. You talked about that, actually, Claudine, where somebody was feeling anxious that they're not doing enough as a as a in their soul contribution and and you talked about actually being kind to that anxiousness and treating it as sacred which is such yeah. an interesting pivot isn't it absolutely yeah yeah it's um allowing it almost and not looking at uh, like i guess not to know that feelings are there's all sorts of feelings they can't all be good so honoring um those negative sides as well and just allowing them and uh, letting letting them flow through i think is a good good tool good way to work through them honoring them that's exactly right it can mm. be really tough like um, moments where yeah. you feel like um 
you're just not handling live. Many people on the many 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 people Absolutely. are in, yeah. in that moment, uh, and so I want to say that it could be a moment to call out to the worlds of spirit, to your spirit helpers, for help in that moment. I'm just kind of saying that. Yeah, that's a that's a good moment where you're feeling you honestly, really, genuinely are at an edge where you're not feeling you're coping, to actually ask for help in that moment from your spirit helpers. It, and well, it uh, kind of reminds me. Sorry to interrupt. But oh, that, mo that movie, um, Eat, Pray, Love, with yeah. Julia Roberts. Mm -hmm. And in that, she, um, she'd never prayed before. And she just felt there was, she was in turmoil, so she prayed. Um, and then she was led to her trip to Italy and Bali. Um, so it was through prayer that she um, started her journey, her spiritual awakening. Which was, yeah, it's a pretty good illustration of, I think, the spiritual awakening, that movie. Very good illustration. Good point. Good point. Yeah, great movie. Um, and great example of someone at, a, at sort of the nth moment in their life where they just, life did it to them or for them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she was in turmoil and she was in a relationship and thinking of having a baby all these choices to make. So very painful time, um, but she sort of was brave and just like, cracked open, as you, as you say, and booked her trip. And in the process, um, I think she was um, in the movie being healed by a monk, Buddhist monk, who had told her previously that she will be back to see him and she would teach him English and he will teach her everything he knew. So she found her way back to the monk and then she finds true love. So through all the pain, um, she just, she really found herself and her purpose. Wow. And one, a key word that I just heard you say is she was brave. Absolutely. That is, you know, that's so key. Isn't it? It is. I mean, just it's going painful back... and people were scared to, to, to make, you know, these huge leaps. And I just quickly flash back to me sitting on the, the floor in the corridor. I have no idea what I was doing there. Um, <laughs> but it was, it, was, it was occurring to me, like penny drops were happening, because I noticed that, <laughs> that I wasn't coping with um, sort of the quantity of have-tos in my life or something like that. And, um, and that, at that moment of acknowledging that, something was out of control, like my life was out of control, or that there were too many expectations on me or something. Maybe I was yeah. putting them on myself. Uh, but it was a moment of acknowledging it and, you know, maybe it's brave to, as you say, to just drop into actually noticing what's going on and just notice how intense everything is. Because when we put our attention on something and notice it, it kind of opens it up a little bit. It's like perspective. You, you're sort of here and you're noticing things, something here instead of just being embroiled in it and at, at so the effect true. of it. You kind of separate a tiny bit and you're looking at it. And um, and in that moment, you could say it's brave because you're softening. You're maybe softening in that moment a little bit. And, and, going, and something very deep inside of you is going, I don't know how to do this. I'm just going to wait for the next moment. Yeah, it's almost like a call for help um, and it's you've got no choice. You've just got to allow what the universe has in store for you. Um, and I think a lot of us don't, um, a lot of people aren't aware in that moment, so they, they just continue on ignoring it and just marching on with all mm. their expectations um, yep. So, yeah, I think that's a sad way to go because they're missing out on the true um, awakening. Absolutely. So a, a symptom of awakening can be, I'm just remembering another time in my life, actually, where we could be in relationships. Sometimes, you know, maybe it happens in relationship and re in relationship doesn't have to mean um, your primary relationship. It could mean yourself with your parents. It could mean you with siblings, it could mean you with your children, which is something is crescendoing. And uh, when, there's, when there's several people involved or yourself with somebody else, 
it's like an echo chamber and um, experiences can blow out of control or they can blow out and crescendo to this pitch of intensity where something's got to give or, or, mm. or a new decision has to be made or a penny drop has to, has to happen or a realization yeah. has to happen to move to the next stage. So th what I'm talking about is handling and moving through the tunnel of those moments to the other side. I, I rem mm. I'm remembering now a, because the other side can very often present something brand new and fresh and mm. more suited to the deeper part of you. You might have opportunities to make choices that are much more aligned with your true self yeah. on the other side of that tunnel. <clears throat> I'm remembering now, um, this doesn't have to happen to everybody who, who wants to awaken, but I remember a time where this was not the, the, that earlier time where I was kind of like feeling like everything was on top of me. This was actually in a relationship I truly loved um, the person I was in a relationship with. But very uncharacteristically, I felt myself moving into a very dark, deep tunnel for about a year. And I knew it was very uncharacteristic of me. It's not the sort of kind yeah. of person I normally am at all. But I came out the other side of this, and this is just my story of awakening. Uh, I came out the other side of that, I feel scrubbed. I felt instinctively that the world of spirit were in there scrubbing really deep tar. Mm -hmm. and, and I just was living a normal life and something was going on. And I'm sharing this because it might be happening to you, whoever's watching this video, where mm -hmm. on the outside everything's pretty stable, but on the inside, and you don't know why, but you might be feeling like somebody is ripping things out of you or you're only just hanging on for no yeah. reason. And for me, it was coming out the other side of it. Um, I really felt like some, it was a bit like that whole thing of waking up at three or four in the morning and the, and the spirit world is doing something to you <clears throat> and is cleaning, cleaning the old part of you. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit related to that. And because I moved into spiritual leadership, as a spiritual teacher now for 30 years, 40 years, um, my path was to be, was to become quite strong and to provide support for a lot of people and also to become a conduit for the worlds of spirit. So a lot had to get cleaned up. <laughs> and absolutely. Yeah. So I'm just saying that sometimes that illogical state of feeling powerlessness, of feeling it's all too much, I remember instinctively knowing I just had to hang on. It was like I was yeah. going through some kind of a ghost train at Disneyland. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Hanging onto the rails and just waiting, waiting for it to finish. Well, and like, anyway, I love what just you say. Saying. Where that was, that was your preparation for your for the role that you were to step into. So I love yep. that. Yeah. Very tough powerful. work, but that's. The job I had, I had come as a soul to do, right? And yeah. and I was willing to handle it. Not that I knew consciously that that's what was going on, but it was a subtle, um, not not even a presumption, but something in me knew there was a reason for it, and I just hang just on hung and on. go with yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. And it was basically because it's it uh, was unusual for me. It's not the style of person that I am. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. So I'm just offering that as a symptom of awakening. <laughs> and a symptom, yeah, a symptom that can <clears throat> it will eventually pass. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. I've I've got another symptom that I want to talk about a little bit, and that is yeah. the itch that doesn't go away. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to talk a little bit about that for you? Like as a symptom of awakening where there's something in you, there's a longing, a soul longing. And yeah, that, that's what it is. It's this it soul lo you. longing. Um, and yeah, I think you can, 
if you're not relating to people like you used to. Um, so conversations might seem surface level, whereas you're wanting to go deeper. You're wanting to talk about deeper um, spirituality and um, and forge new connections. Um, and yeah, I think you just feel unfulfilled in what you're doing. That's that's the itch; it just won't go away. Um, everything you try doesn't seem to feel aligned, or it's not it's not filling you up. Um, so sometimes it takes someone like a mentor or, or someone to just pop into our life that's sent to us to awaken us and um, and just plant that seed. So once and and even I think once we do realise, then it's still a journey and it still can be painful even though you know exactly what you want to do you've got to get there so I think it's just following that path with work um, and grace and with with prayer and meditation really really amping up your connection with spirit guides um, and diving into spirituality I so really I I really love what you just said there, Claudine. Was there something else that you wanted to add? No, that's fine. Yeah, that's it, hun. <laughs> <laughs> because <clears throat> you mentioned two really important things, which is meditation and connection to spirit guides. Sometimes people don't go, oh, there's these two things. And I'm, as we're talking, I just was noticing, okay, yep, there's the two things, which is connection with yourself, your divine self, your spirit self. Uh, your soul self through meditation, connecting with God's source through meditation, right? Absolutely. And uh, and and ongoing, as you're saying, um, the neuroplasticity of the mind. The more you meditate, that the mind goes there faster. Your your whole being drops into the still spot faster. So the more you bring it into your day, I mean, the more often and the more consistently, if you make it. You, you've talked about this heaps, Claudine, eh? just every day, every day, every day, yes. every day. Yeah, just 100%. Touching it, touching it, touching it, touching it. Because that builds muscle and it builds that neuroplasticity. What I mean by that is it builds a highway straight yeah. to that deep, deep place that you just sit there and bang, you just go into it after a, after a period of time. So just saying, so it's not just repetition, but it's also the length of time. If you can stay there for a half an hour and let the... The conscious mind wind down, <laughs> just wind down, and then you find yourself just sitting in in the stillness finally, and allowing yourself to just drop deeper and deeper into the stillness. Mm. Um, so what that does is it builds that highway to your divine self, to your soul self. Mm. So you can sit quietly in your soul self. One incredible, it's like digging to go. To, to get to the other side of the planet, you know. It's like we're, we're digging, working to get to the soul self, to feel it. <clears throat> and the more you do that, the more you awaken, the more you're sitting in God presence, in God source, looking out at the physical world, but coming from such a place of simplicity and simple joy, simple contentment. You know, exactly. awake, awakenness isn't a big flash of blinding light. Awakenness is connection to God's source. So, it is. If, so if you plug it in like, you know, a plug in the socket, if you plug that in over and over and over again, it starts binding, you know, and that that connection doesn't go away. So you can just stay there, plugged in. So that's one. I just want to mention that that's huge to awakenness. And then there's, guess what, something that I discovered after 16 years of following an Indian spiritual master and meditating for a couple of hours every day. Wow. <clears throat> yeah, for 16 years. So something I discovered, uh, there was a time for me where I wanted to, my conscious self wanted to understand my soul. Isn't that interesting? It's like I wanted to hold a mm -hmm. mirror up so I could see my soul, talk to it, understand what what I was where I'd come from in other lifetimes uh, mm. and and understand who it was that was occupying my body um, walking talking like the driver in the car yeah. I wanted to know who I wanted to know who that was so what I did and again I was following the longing I picked up a book on how to talk to spirit guides did an exercise and opened up 
to start with a little communication relationship with a spirit guide, started to practice, we've talked about this in other podcasts, um, did my sort of for about a year or two, asked spirit guide questions, wrote it out on paper so I could get confident that it was working, that it made logical sense and built that confidence with my spirit guide and um, learned how to talk two-way with my spirit guide really clearly in detail and built a relationship with a spirit guide so that my spirit guide could um, take me into moments uh, inside and in a journeying and show me who I was and talk to me about who I was. Um, mm. And that opened up another part of awakening, which is I could sit in stillness and with God's source and be in that. And wow. then it added, who am I? What am I doing here? Um, and also a big part of that was gr uh, working together in partnership with the worlds of spirit, with my spirit guides, because they could see what my soul wanted to achieve. They want, and they started to help my soul achieve what mm. me as a human in my logical mind couldn't even understand yet. So they were all, all, almost running ahead of me and setting up circumstances and helping me get there over and over and over and over again. Isn't that mm. amazing, Claudine, where it they, is. you know, where the spirit world starts mentoring you towards more and more in your awakening but also into your role of what you'd come here to do absolutely and because you invited them in so then they knew that they were welcome um and they began the work um yeah it's it's almost it is it is magical really isn't it it's it's incredible it's powerful mm. it's magical a lot of people yeah. aren't aware that they've got uh spirit guides to help them in really practical ways, you know, especially to fulfill their soul satisfaction, their soul longing. Like they, they don't realize that there's a real practical relationship there. Yes, you know? yeah. And they're so wise with, um, well, I think they're beyond enlightenment, really, aren't they? Well, the beautiful thing is that there's levels and levels and levels and levels of awakening. So they're the other mm. guys that keep feeling, you know, once you've got that um, relationship, uh, even if you can't hear them super clearly, and I always mention that I've got a course that helps people just start talking to their spirit guides um, on my website, soulmentoring.com, soulmentoring.com, yeah. Because um, once you do open that relationship and have that relationship, even if you can't hear them that clearly, they will want to bend over backwards and come as far as they can, close as close to you. Right. To... Um, to start moving you towards your soul fulfillment in this lifetime. So are very keen to help, really, really, really keen to help. And um, mm. yes. So yeah, I think, I what, I was, I think I was, what I was going to say there is, they're just reminding me right now to say, is that there are more and more floors of the building to keep going up, you know, like yeah. more and more levels of awakening and... I think there's a very high possibility that it never stops, that you're actually, yeah. it, it, and they're the ones that are facilitating pulling away the veil again and again and again and again to awakening. And that's why it's great to have a partner and a buddy in the in this journey where, in terms Absolutely. of the, the worlds of spirit. So it's a lifelong journey. It is a lifelong journey and you're not on your own with it. Yeah. <laughs> so, so in terms of awakening and that topic of awake, awakening, because many, many people are following spiritual teachers, are following spiritual masters, are on a med deep meditation practice journey, but they haven't brought in that piece of a mentor, a spirit mentor from mm -hmm. the worlds of spirit who can see their soul, who can guide them accurately and with acceleration. So there's a lot of accuracy there and yeah. um, specific tailoring to you and your soul and there's acceleration. So a lot of people who are in yoga or in um, spiritual practices with deep meditation practices, they haven't brought that piece in. And that's something that as a, I feel like um, I just did the research in my own life and having been a meditator and followed a, an Indian spiritual teacher for many, many years, way over a decade and and then brought in that piece of chatting with spirit guides 
my awakening was just super boosted. It was it just a real power button. It just went yeah. so fast. And that can be different for everyone, would you say, Alicia? Everyone's absolutely differently. Everyone yeah. can handle different levels of speed. <laughs> right. Yeah. Absolutely. And however, what I do like to talk about in terms of whoever you are, if you are looking for speed of awakening, um, I do highly recommend making efforts, not only to meditate, but also to start opening up a relationship with your spirit guide, really, really honestly. Because, uh, and whoever you are, you can practice. It took me a year or so of practice where I got my confidence of talking with my spirit guides. Um, I always say that some people are born talking to their spirit guides. So that veil, I had gone into not remembering that and that, that had to sort of just be opened and the veil sort of pulled away. But yeah. I, I was the one that had to do the work and practice. And um, so I just want to say, if you practice, you get better. It's like jumping on a bike. Um, yeah. Just find your balance you, or learning to play a musical instrument. You you learn to make it sound sweeter over time because you're just practicing. And uh, it's exactly the same with talking with spirit guides. So I'm encouraging people that it's not just for the clever ones or the, or the ones that can talk to spirit guides because they're naturally good at yeah. it. From my point of view, pretty well much nearly everyone can learn to talk to their spirit guides. That's, that's my point of view. If I can, anyone can. <laughs> yeah. Well, so yeah. good to know. Yes. I was, I'm just being reminded yesterday <clears throat> I had um, this wonderful, this lovely young guy um, was a cleaner. He was, he came in to clean our house and, uh, and he, as, as he was cleaning, he could see that I had sort of video equipment and, and he said, Oh, do you do, some filming, you know, are, are you into self-development or something? I'm not sure. Maybe you saw a book <laughs> lying around. Yeah, maybe. Um, yeah, maybe. Um, and as we chatted, he said, look, he used to be a professional footballer when he was young and he really wanted to study spirituality, but then he, nobody around him was interested, was into it. <clears throat> and, uh, and then he said, I forgot about it and I stopped. And... Yeah. And now he's much more mature, he's much older, and he's following some spiritual teachers, and, wow. he, and he said to himself, but I was right back, back then. He was kind of feeling like he'd lost those years, and, um, and he was just speaking out loud and thinking out loud with me as we were talking that... I was right back then. I should have kept yeah. going with what my deep longing and this niggling yeah, yeah. feeling of knowing that I needed to learn more about spirituality. And and as I looked at him, I thought, oh, what a beautiful soul, you know, and what a beautiful soul. And, and finally it had come back and he was starting again to learn and pursue. He was jumping into YouTube and watching spiritual teachers and hearing and listening and learning again and and something in me said to him you've, you part of this journey of awakening is you've got to be really courageous uh, there's a need for courage because sometimes we're in social circles that just are not interested in yeah. awakening or in learning about spirituality and um, yeah so true so, Courage. Elisa, what do you say to someone who does think they've lost those years and they should have, should have, could have, uh, it, it's not too late? Um, it isn't too late. And I come back to the moment that you were talking about where you just know. So it's, it's uh, you've got to find that gold thread deep inside, right? Mm. Um the mother load of gold, the seam of gold deep in the ground and find it and plug back into it. And it's not too late. Um, it's like, I feel like saying it's like the roar of a lion, this huge need, like a waterfall is, can be powerful, like the Niagara Falls, this intensity of purpose, this intensity of power of mm -hmm. your soul wanting to awaken, awaken, 
um, of your soul wanting to see itself in a mirror, <laughs> of, yeah. of your soul wanting to learn more about itself and about what this, what is going on here. What is reality? What is physical reality? What is me as a soul? So that the roar of the lion, that power um, to bring it back up and to surf that wave. It's, it's, mm. And so at some point, uh, there's a letting go. There's another letting go. And that I remember, gosh, when I was young, I just took that. I jumped on the surfboard and I just went. And I let go of social circles and mm. a lot. And I just yeah. wanted to go 100 million percent deep into that connection. That was me in my life. It's not everyone. But there's courage there. There's a letting go there. There's a surrender there. There's a following of what you know beyond your logic, totally what you're saying. Yes, yeah. And, and a little and, bit of sometimes solitude as well. Yes. Yeah. I, I'm a little bit unusual maybe. I don't know. I'm just that roaring lion or that Niagara Falls power, you know, mm. where I was, um, I don't know, was I stubborn? I don't know. But I was just following, following something pretty powerful in me. Mm a hunger in me and and I knew it was beyond everything it was beyond people it was beyond the physical world um, <clears throat> and there was a humility in that there was just an unerring guidance in it and an unerring clarity in me yeah so I'm just describing my feelings mm. and the way that I was working with it really really early. this is when I was 18 19 very early yeah and, yeah. and I decided to jump to jump in the I'm glad you did <laughs> in the jump of the roller coaster carriage you know like let's go yeah yeah fantastic <clears throat> yep so as you say um loneliness aloneness it take I think it takes a lot of courage actually. But on the other hand, you're travelling towards something that's even beyond this life. It, you're travelling towards something eternal. You're travelling towards um, you're earning brownie points for way beyond this life. Yeah. <laughs> and so actually, it's quite a smart thing to do. I it's think so. It, it can be comforting to know. At the end of this life, there's a, I believe there's a transformation that happens and then there's another life waiting. So this is all the work um, That's right. toward that. So. That's exactly right. Yeah. So there's a couple of things in terms of awakening and hunger and soul hunger. And one is that there's, the soul has actually come here for a reason. It's got a job it wants to do. So it wants to fulfill that job. And at the same time, it is building brownie points for when it mm -hmm. travels back. Yeah. So there's there's two things. There's um, the delivery of your love, giving and uplifting people, educating people, uh, enlightening people, um, awakening people. And then there's building strength for yourself. So as you're doing that, really? there's that second thing, which is growing up and maturing and becoming more of the who you are, the soul that you are. And, um, yeah, so it's a two-way street. It's a giving and a receiving, you know, a gift for whoever's in front of you and a gift for yourself. So, Beautiful. yeah, so I encourage everybody who's watching this to just contemplate that and reflect on that and, and notice where that part of you is which has that knowing. You just know. And don't take any notice of anybody else. Just tune into your own knowing and follow that you'll come across different spiritual teachers sometimes they will be exactly what you need for a period of time and then you'll be looking for something else and then sometimes something else so keep following your own knowing <laughs> keep following Lovely. your own knowing everyone that's the bottom line all right well thank you so much claudine what a beautiful you, conversation Alicia. i hope everybody who's watched this enjoyed this conversation and just I hope it triggered just thoughts in you and I thought it I hope it thank um I hope it helped um you understand yourself a little bit more because awakening can be just this topic that can be a little bit confusing especially if you're in the middle of 
one of those huge transitions, you know, or this intensity of stress, and you're wondering what life's all about. So if you are, hold on. Hold on to the roller coaster carriage to the sides <laughs> and wait for it to Absolutely. wait for it to come out because when you come out you'll be you'll have let go of a lot of baggage and there will be empty a sort of a cool out empty space in front of you and it's all about yeah just coming back to that your own knowing of what you want what you're feeling thank you so enjoy talking to you it's just such an honor and such a privilege and thank you everyone namaste and we'll see you next time <laughs>